I think it's pretty clear at this point that you guys just love to waste your time. So in this video, I'm going to steal 30 minutes of your life to tell you a bunch of useless information about GTA 5, which you are legally obligated to forget about as soon as you click off this video. Ready? Let's go. Let's start this off with a fact that will ruin your day. There are two very small texture errors on the weapon wheel. There's one on the top left, just above the throwables, and there's one just to the right of the assault rifles. They are both extremely hard to see, but once you've seen it, you likely won't be able to unsee it. If you fly the Deluxo or the Oppressor Mark II for around an hour, the hovering sound they make will begin to slowly glitch out. The Deluxo tends to gain this weird static sound as time goes on, while the Oppressor tends to fluctuate between being really high pitched to very low pitched. It can be difficult to hear, so listen closely. Whilst researching for this video, I stumbled across this very strange easter egg. There's a hairstyle which you can buy called Hipster Youth. This has a uncanny resemblance to the term Hitler Youth. This easter egg is made even more compelling by the fact that this type of hairstyle seemed to be fairly popular among German youngsters around the time of the Nazi regime. I don't know whether the resemblance was actually intentional or not, but even for a GTA game, this just kind of feels a bit out of place. Over three weeks before the KO Brico heist came out, Rockstar released a strange and rather cryptic teaser called Surveil.exe. As to be expected, it contains many massive hints as to what the update was about. One thing that stood out was these coordinates at the bottom. If you type in these coordinates into Google Maps, you get sent to this road in the US state of West Virginia. Although it looks unremarkable at first, many players have speculated that this road looks very familiar to the Roman numeral 6, or VI which could literally be a reference to GTA 6. After looking at it myself, I must say that it is quite a bizarre coincidence. Unfortunately, Rockstar has neither confirmed or denied this easter egg, so for now, it remains a mystery. If you enter the sewers with a helicopter, all of the water on the floor will seemingly turn into milk. Now if this isn't useless, I don't know what is. In GTA Online, there's an option to take the easy way out. Doing this will cause your character to shoot themselves in the head. I'm sure the majority of you know this, but one thing you probably didn't know is that the bullet actually passes through your head. If you were to position yourself in just the right angle with another player, you could take out two birds with one stone. It would be incredibly impressive if someone could actually pull this off in a fight. Have you ever heard of the Karen Snipe? If you've been on the GTA forums or just generally a part of the GTA community for a while, you would have probably heard some people talking about a supposed vehicle called the Karen Snipe. Many players would claim to own this vehicle, and they would brag about how good it is. Despite this however, there's no evidence whatsoever of this vehicle anywhere in the game files. So what is it? And why do people keep on saying that it exists? Well, I hate to ruin the fun, but the snipe is actually just a practical joke. The term, snipe hunting, is a fool's errand which seems to be mainly played in American summer camps or in Boy Scouts. The joke starts by telling a newcomer about a rare creature called the snipe, and telling the newcomer to sit still somewhere in the woods to attract it. The people playing the joke will then convince them to stay still for as long as they can, and will tell them to make noises to attract this supposedly rare creature. The jokesters will then leave the victim by themselves, until they eventually realise that it was all just a joke. Despite this however, I have a few Karen snipes in my garage. It is by far the best vehicle in the game, and I would highly recommend that you buy one for yourself. At this location in Vinewood Hills, you can find the numbers 1807 spray painted on this wall. You've likely driven past this many many times and just never paid any mind to it. However, some theorists believe that these numbers hold a lot more meaning than what meets the eye. Next to these numbers is a small red arrow, which if followed seems to lead us to this house here. Some people believe that both this house and these numbers are a reference to the horrific murders carried out by the Mason family, which was a small cult located in Los Angeles around the time of 1969. The cult had an average of 18 members at any given time, and they were held accountable for seven confirmed murders. That's where the 1807 comes in. Another bit of supposed proof is that a strange party always takes place at this house at night. If you were to bump into any of these NPCs, they would immediately die. All of them are completely incapable of moving or retaliating. This is said to be a reference to the murders themselves. However, this is not the case. It's just a well-known glitch with the NPCs, one that can be seen all over the map, including other houses. I'm also not fully convinced on the whole 1807 thing either. I think it's more likely that this is the house number for this mansion. Many other mansions near this area have similar house numbers, and it's not too much of a stretch to assume that the house owners would paint their house number onto this wall to let people know where to find them. 
All in all, this is an interesting theory, one that I did believe at first, but I think there's just not enough evidence to support it. If you disagree, or have some more proof that supports this theory, then by all means let me know in the comments. At this hippie camp, you can find this string of numbers and letters, 6EQUJ5. This is a direct reference to the WOW signal, which was an unexplainably strong radio frequency that was picked up by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope in August 1977. A signal of this kind has never been seen before, and no one truly knows what caused it. Due to the unknown nature of this signal, the most popular theory for this is that it was of extraterrestrial origin. If you choose the power and money art design when setting up your agency, you can find this painting of four characters fighting. These characters have some striking resemblances to some very popular YouTubers, namely Vanos Gaming, Louis Caliber, H2O Delirious, and Ohmwrecker. These YouTubers were at one point very influential in the world of GTA 5. I mean, just look at these views. I think that this is a very nice gesture from Rockstar to honour the community like this. In the game files, you can find some cut execution animations. Although we do have melee executions in game, these particular executions involve shooting someone at point blank range with a firearm, such as a pistol, shotgun, or assault rifle. These all look really cool. It's such a shame they got scrapped. At this location, you can find this little shack in the desert. Although at first, it looks like an unassuming utility building, the one thing that stands out about this is that there are armed and aggressive men in black guarding it. This building could potentially be connected to the Humane Labs, which further increases the mystery behind this thing. Why they're guarding this place so heavily, or what could be inside, is really anyone's guess. For whatever reason, the stats for the stun gun are an absolute mess. As you can see here, the picture they used for it is completely wrong. They seem to have used the AP pistol model instead of the actual stun gun model. It also suggests that the stun gun has attachments, which it clearly doesn't. The most interesting error they made is its apparent clip size of 2,104,529,083. I think it's quite clear that this was rushed. There are three animations you can do whilst in cover that not many people tend to know about. As far as I know, these animations are never showed off or explained in game at all. The first one we'll be taking a look at is the animation for running out of cover. This is performed by moving forward and then pressing the sprint button. For what inputs you need to do exactly, please refer to these diagrams. The second one will make you shimmy around corners. To perform this, poke your head out like this and then press the jump button. It's pretty simple, but could be helpful in some very specific situations. This last one will allow you to very quickly swap between two different points of cover. Find two walls which are roughly a door's width apart and take cover on it. You will then need to poke your head out and then press the cover button. Although this already looks cool enough on its own, if you were to equip a gun and shoot during the animation, it would make you look badass. This works with pretty much any weapon too, including RPGs, although I don't really recommend it. Admittedly, these movements aren't really effective in combat nowadays, but they are still perfect for making some unique looking cinematics. There is an unexplained phenomenon that happens at this location at night. This green glow, as people have come to call it, doesn't seem to be caused by anything in particular. It's just sort of there. As to be expected, many people believe that this is connected to aliens. Strangely, this phenomenon does not occur on current gen versions of the game, only on last gen, which could mean that it was just some strange texture glitch and wasn't actually intentional. On one of the many rock faces of Machiliad, you can find this completely random face. No one really knows whose face this is. Some players say that it's the face of Jesse from Breaking Bad, whilst others say that it's one of the developers from Rockstar leaving their mark. Whatever the case may be, this face would be removed when the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game came out. It was replaced by, for lack of a better words, a picture of a cock. In story mode, there are five side missions which introduce you to the character Dom, a adrenaline junkie who convinces Franklin to do multiple crazy and death-defying stunts with him. On his final mission, he goes way too far and falls to his death after jumping off a dam without a parachute. These missions are in typical GTA style, with witty dialogue and fun gameplay, nothing out of the ordinary, except for one aspect, the dog. In the first and last mission, there is a random dog that communicates with Franklin. Hey, what's up my nigga? Good to see you, dog. In both missions, the dog will lead Franklin to Dom, which is actually how they first met. When Franklin asks Dom about the dog, he says he has no clue what he's talking about. Man, that's a cool ass dog you got, homie. What dog? That dog that saved your, saved your ass, man. Dude, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. The same thing also happens in the final mission. Hey man, I ain't too sure about this one. Man, that motherfucking dog was the real deal. What dog? <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, man. The community has given this dog the name of Ghost Dog, 
and because of its ability to seemingly disappear and reappear whenever it sees fit. Many people believe that this is the same dog that is seen in the Play God minigame on the Accept the Chaos website. In one of these pictures it shows a similar looking dog with its family, and in the other it shows a really graphic car accident in which the whole family is dead, including the dog. Could this dog be the same dog that died in that tragic accident, and has it now come back as a ghost? To be honest, I really don't know. There are still loads of questions left unanswered, such as why is the dog helping Dom? Why does it communicate with Franklin? And why does Franklin seem so unfazed by it? I guess this is just one of the many unsolved mysteries surrounding GTA 5. If you was to blow up any one of these five vehicles nine times, you will start to see parts of that respective vehicle scattered around your facility. There's evidence in the game files that Michael DeSanto's name was originally going to be Michael DeSanto, this can be heard in this unused police scanner dialogue. Attention all units, suspect is reported as Michael DeSanto. It's likely that this was changed to avoid any confusion that people might have between Los Santos and De Santo. Next up, I'm going to answer the question that nobody asked. How many properties are up for sale in the entire state of San Andres? Answering this question was kind of easy, we just needed to add up all the houses, apartments, garages, offices, special cargo warehouses, vehicle warehouses, clubhouses, weed farms, cocaine lockups, meth labs, document forgery factory, money printing factory, nightclubs, arcades, hangars, auto shops, bunkers, facilities, agencies, arena workshop and casino penthouse. This gives us a total of 197 purchasable properties. When I first worked this all out, I was like wow, that's interesting, that's like 25% of the buildings in the game or something. I wonder how many buildings there are in the game. To find the answer to this one-off question, I shit you not, I counted every single building in the game, making sure to double check every one of them. This right here is the perfect reason as to why these videos take so damn long to make. I get sidetracked by the smallest and stupidest things. So anyway, after disregarding my own mental health for a good few hours, I came to the conclusion that there are around 2,359 total buildings in the game. To be perfectly honest, there's a high chance that this could be inaccurate, as I did miscount a couple of times, and it can be quite difficult to define what a building actually is, so apologies if it's not 100% correct. After using these two numbers and doing a bit of math magic, I came to the conclusion that 8.35% of the buildings in the game are available for purchase. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been working on this one bit of info for way too long now. Let's get on with the next one. If you was to blow up an air conditioning unit that has a ladder on it, you'd still be able to use the ladder, despite it being completely destroyed. The most expensive vehicle in the game is the Luxor Deluxe, which is a golden jet that costs a staggering $10 million. If you wanted to buy this thing with real money, the absolute minimum you would have to do is purchase these 5 different shark guards for a total of $10,050,000 GTA dollars. This would cost you £88.45p. Or for the American viewers, $137.95. All of this money for a useless and slightly retextured jet. What an absolute deal. You can get a very small amount of RP if you plug your mic in and sing in the shower. The same also works for screaming on roller coasters. One thing you should keep in mind while doing this however is that the whole lobby will be able to hear you. Things that break off of vehicles such as doors, rudders, etc. We will a lot of the time have zero mass, meaning that they are stupidly easy to move. Objects with zero mass tend to produce some really strange effects, such as this massless generator getting stuck in walls, massless fences that launch you in the air, and literally being able to surf using two massless objects. If you've ever been on the train before, you would have probably noticed that your character does this really weird leap when jumping to one container to another. Almost like you're getting snapped onto it, this is obviously put in place to help you make the jump. However, because of this, it lets our characters jump an absurdly long distance. Using the male's cannon height of 6 foot, I was able to calculate exactly how far this jump is. 23.15 feet, or 7 meters. To give you an idea just how far this is, it's nearly triple the normal distance you can jump, at nearly double the world record for a standing long jump. And this guy's jumping with just one leg. Our characters have some seriously impressive athletic abilities. At what level do you unlock everything? This seems like a pretty simple question to answer. A lot of you would say 120, as that's the rank where you unlock the final weapon, the minigun. However, this is a largely debated topic. Many people claim that you unlock a slight health regeneration increase on the levels 140, 160, 180, and finally 200, where the regen caps out at 1.2 times. 
This information comes from the GTA Wiki, which is a trusted source for GTA info. Another source for this comes from Tez Fun on the GTA forums, who is a well-known data miner slash leaker who has provided the community with a lot of valuable information over the years, such as the info for the Scrap Story Mode DLCs. If you've watched my last useless information video, you'll know what I mean. So basically, this guy knows what he's talking about. Despite this, however, many people still claim that this just isn't true, as there is no proof of this regen in effect. I searched high and low for proof of the regen but I found absolutely nothing. Because of this, I decided to pour a Thanos and do it myself. I made a fresh account and spent exactly 17 hours grinding it to level 120. I met up with my two friends, who are way above level 200, and we shot each other with unmodified heavy snipers, both in and out of cover, to test exactly how long it takes for both of us to recover health, from the exact frame we got shot to the exact frame we stopped regaining health. And as it turns out, there is literally no difference at all. We tried it again while standing up, but once again, no difference. One thing I neglected to mention about Fun's post here is that he said that the regen also affects the speed in which you gain health within the CEO radius. You know that little circle thingy around CEOs? Yeah, that thing. If you're an associate and are within that circle, you get a health regen boost, which apparently is boosted even more depending on your rank. We tested it again, this time within the CEO circle, but once again, the regen speed was the exact same for both me and my friend. These really weren't the results I was expecting, but as they say, the numbers don't lie. I'm not saying these sources are wrong, there likely is some kind of stat like this in the game, but it's clear, at least on the expanded and enhanced edition anyway, that there is no health regen past 120. The only thing you do unlock past 120 is the ability to hold 10 body armor at 135, a silver background at 500, and a golden background at 750. So to answer the question from the beginning, at what level do you unlock everything? Technically, it would be 750, but in terms of actual perks, it'll be 135. The only real perk you get past 135 is the ability to flex. The lamp in this lighthouse will only rotate if you directly look at it. As soon as you look away, it will stop moving completely. If you look into the back of an RPG, you can quite clearly see that it's completely hollow. Around May of 2020, Rockstar accidentally made bunker sales triple money, which for the small time that was available, let a few very lucky players earn a maximum of $3.1 million in a single sale. This amount was so high that there are some reports of players just not getting the money, as the game likely deemed it to be illegitimate. In the ECU contract, you have to rob a couple of ECUs from a heavily armoured train. To find them, you need to break open multiple containers, which are usually filled with weapons, crates, etc. However, on some rare occasions, you can find a container that is completely devoid of any serial numbers. Opening this container reveals an alien egg, which seems to be hooked up to some weird machine. You can also find a similar looking container, which houses a spaceship part. Did you know that a significant amount of the interiors in the game are actually stored under the map? This means that if you know where they are, and are able to get out of bounds near one of them, you'll be able to parachute directly onto it. Here's a map I put together of every single interior which can be found out of bounds. The ones with a green outline are accessible in free mode by default, whilst the ones with a red outline cannot be accessed unless you're in a certain mission or event. Keep in mind that every one of these interiors are different and will react differently if you land on them. For example, some don't like you being there at all and will kick you out instantly. Others will let you stay and some will just straight up softlock you. At these exact coordinates, you can find this white cube that has the phrase this does not exist written on all of its faces. This cube is way too deep in the ocean to reach by normal means, so the only way to see it is by using this program called Codewalker, or by using a mod that removes all map limitations. I would like to think that this was intentionally put here, just to confuse the very few modders that would actually find it. The single rarest achievement in GTA 5 is the Masterminds achievement. To get this thing, you have to complete the entire Doomsday Heist on the hardest difficulty without losing a single life. Not only that, you also need to do it three times over, with two, three and four players. Less than 0.01% of players on Xbox have this achievement. According to the website True Achievements, only 800 of the 750,000 True Achievements members have unlocked this achievement, making it a 336 rarest achievement on Xbox. When you spin the lucky wheel, there's a 3% chance that you'll get this festive gingerbread mask. The festive items are usually only available during Christmas. However, unlocking this mask through the lucky wheel will allow you to wear it all year round. When the Diamond Casino update came out, there was originally going to be billboards around the city that would promote its grand opening. This is made apparent by the game file, LS DLC VW Billboard. It would have likely looked something like this. 
There's a glitch with the expanded and enhanced versions of the game where water rapids no longer make you fall over or affect you in any way. This is me comparing the PC version with the expanded and enhanced version, and as you can see, on the PC version I fall over instantly and get tossed around by the currents, but on this new version these intense rapids have zero effect. I can even swim all the way up a waterfall, which just looks kind of ridiculous. There are some very small mistakes in the official GTA 5 digital manual that I thought would be fun to point out. First of all, this picture they used for the Rotten Canyon is wrong. They incorrectly used a picture of Largo Zancudo. The same also goes for Mount Josiah. At the top, it says take a hike in Mount Josiah, when this is quite clearly Mount Chiliad. The last one I could find is this picture for the location Harmony, which clearly shows this beer cake which is actually located in Great Sharapel. In the game files, there's a cut GTA Online heist that is surprisingly fully voiced by Lester. From listening to this dialogue, we can paint a rough picture of how this heist would have panned out. The objective of the heist was to rob five fleecer banks around the city within 10 minutes. After robbing the final bank, likely this specific one here, the police would seize your car which would force you to escape on foot and fight your way through Legion Square and into this parking lot that contains a getaway vehicle. You would have then had to make your escape by driving into the Ellis River, where you would have needed to ditch the car and hop on some jet skis. You and your crew would then make your way out of the river and then finally split up to lose the heat out in the ocean. It's likely that this is what the fleecer heist was originally going to be. And to be honest, it sounds way better than what we got today. Every year, there's a games developer conference that takes place in San Francisco. In this conference, multiple game developers come together and talk about their projects, share ideas, and provide inspiration to all different kinds of developers. On the 18th of March 2019, there was a GDC talk done by Miriam Bellard, who is the art director for visual development at Rockstar Games. In this hour-long talk, she shows off some very interesting concept art and general beta stuff from some of the GTA Online updates. It really is an interesting video. If you have the time, I'd recommend giving it a watch. The link will be down below. In the contract DLC, there are some voice lines from your assistant and Franklin, which references some well-known characters and celebrities throughout the GTA franchise. Have a listen for yourself. Saw so Mr. Clinton up in his office talking with Mad Dog earlier. <laughs> I gotta say, Mr. Clinton looked kind of starstruck. So yesterday I get this call. Squeakiest fucking gangster you ever heard asking for Mr. Clinton. I was like, Jeffrey? Turns out he still gets pissed when you call him that. I remember working the door for him back in the 90s. Now look where he's at. I hope he swings by sometime. Hey, if you see Mr. Clinton, let him know Mrs. Clinton swung by earlier. And she looked, well, you know, maybe he want to pick up some flowers or something. Hey, do you know some crazy ass Russian dude? Some guy got passed through my office talking about some caviars and submarines and shit. Said he knew you. Some about want to take another trip to the Caribbean. Hey, does the name Trevor Phillips mean anything to you? <laughs> I just heard you did some work with him a while back. Man, shit leaves some scars, don't it? Hey, you didn't tell me you knew Lester. I was speaking to him yesterday and your name came up. Man, me and him go way back. In the 2014 Independence Day update, Rockstar added a displaceable firework which is heavily customizable. You could choose the type, colour, and timer for each of these fireworks. You could also hold a maximum of 9 at any given time. These fireworks were only ever available for one month, which made them exceptionally rare. Unfortunately, when the Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game came out, the fireworks were discontinued completely, as they removed the option to use them in the interaction menu. It's been a whole 8 years since the fireworks were last up for sale, so it's very unlikely that we'll ever see its return. At this location next to the casino, you can find this weirdly textured hedge. This bug seems to only appear in online, as the hedge looks completely normal in story mode. Another thing I noted about this hedge is that it shares the same colour palette as the original casino, which probably means that this bug occurred when they were replacing the old casino with the diamond casino. You can see other bugs that were caused by the casino renovation that weren't there before the update, so I think it's likely that this is just one of those. According to the GTA wiki, the absolute maximum amount of money that you can own at one time is $2,147,483,647. This number is the maximum positive value for a 32-bit integer. Going beyond this amount would cause your money to tick over to the negatives. Although I'm pretty sure that the game wouldn't let that happen, you would likely just stop being able to gain money. Although this is a crazy amount of cash, some people, such as the professional, have already made it to the 1 billion mark. I think it's likely that a very determined someone could legitimately hit the money cap. Oh, and by the way, if you wanted to know how much it would cost to buy this amount of money in chart cards, I've worked that out. You would need to buy 268 Megalodon chart cards, which would cost you $26,837. There's evidence in the game files that suggests the prologue heist was going to be slightly different from what we got today. 
This is made apparent by this unused surveillance room that is fully furnished. Some unused objective text telling you to go to the security room and this unused voice line from Brad. Hey, hey, we gotta torch the servers, come on. I think it's quite obvious that we were originally supposed to go into the surveillance room and destroy all security camera footage. In the 360 and the PS3 game files, there is this weird looking overlay filled with these cryptic runes. There wasn't too much information about the runes themselves, so I have no clue if they can actually be translated or not. However, I did manage to find this clip of it being animated, and I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. It definitely looks like the type of thing you would expect to see in a UFO. The cinematic camera for the mission Father and Son was created in a rather peculiar way. This user, Lucas 7 Yoshi, used a couple of scripts to see what the cinematic camera was attached to, and as it turns out, it was attached to an invisible truck, which floated and faced the boat at all times. I'm not even going to pretend to understand why this was done. The same user, Lucas 7 Yoshi, also managed to find some very old pathfinding trails left behind by a Rockstar developer. The path often goes through the floor and through some walls, which likely means that when the developer was recording this, the GTA 5 map was slightly different to what it is today. In the Cayo Perico compound, you can see loads of pictures of El Rubio and El Rubio's family. This particular picture here shows his mugshot. If you didn't know, these numbers on the mugshot board directly represent the amount of RP you have, meaning that we can find out exactly what level Mr. Rubio is. Quite unexpectedly, he's only level 42. You would have thought that a man who owns an entire island and who peddles a crap ton of drugs would have a lot more reputation. Even someone like the Mar has four times the amount of rep than Mr. Rubio. The only explanation I could have for this is that it must be a very old picture, way before he ever built his criminal empire. Here's something I had absolutely no clue was in the game. If you export a grand total of 1000 exotic vehicles, you'll get this lengthy text from Brucey congratulating you. I at first had no idea how Brucey was connected to vehicle exports, but as it turns out, he actually ran his own import-export business and car shop in GTA 4. To be honest, I don't even want to imagine how long it will take to reach 1000 exports. At this location, you can find this random light floating in midair. In this strip club, you can sometimes find this NPC who is wearing a jersey with the name Hopkins written on the back of it. This seems to be a reference to the main character in the game bully, Jimmy Hopkins. Some people believe that this NPC is actually Jimmy himself. However, I think that this is highly unlikely based on his skin tone and overall shape of his face. A while back, some players would claim that being a female character in GTA Online provides you with combat advantages over male characters, such as females having a smaller hitbox and being able to run faster. However, this isn't the case. In my own testing, as well as many others, it's been proven that both male characters and female characters have the exact same hitbox and running speed. When you walk into the facility planning area, the computer will take a few seconds to power on. During this powering on sequence, for exactly 5 frames, you can see 5 different sets of numbers, which look to be coordinates. And sure enough, following these coordinates will take you to some pretty strange places. The top set of numbers will take you to this UFO above the Bishop's WTF building. The second set of numbers will take you to the doors of the same building. The third set will take you to this underwater UFO just off the coast of Polito Bay. The fourth will take you to this location in Lago Zancudo, which is the exact location where the secret crashed UFO mission takes place. The fifth one is probably the strangest out of all of them. It takes you to this random spot under the map. This particular set of coordinates is the only one that is accompanied by text that says GPS tracker sub process calibrate origin. I really don't know enough about coordinates or coding to understand what this means, or to even determine if this has any meaning at all. If you have any more information about this, then please let me know in the comments. If you approach a snack vendor that has the take all and select option, pressing them both at the same time will give you one extra snack than you can normally carry. The Yellow Jack Inn has some pretty strange pictures and items inside of it. I picked out three that I thought were the most interesting. The first one is this $69 bill. The woman in the middle is the same woman from the GTA San Andreas box art. The second one is this picture of a tow truck, which was obviously taken in GTA 4. Funnily enough, you can actually see Nico Bellic in the driver's seat. The last one is this very old beta image of a stunt plane. The background suggests that this was taken before Sandy Shores was even created. Back then, it looked a lot more like a flat, empty desert. If we pay attention to some of the details, we can see this map error on the right. A strange black building in the middle, which I think is supposed to be this building here. And on the left, we have this singular trailer. Based on where it is, I would assume that this trailer is actually Trevor's, as I think it would make sense that developers would prioritise making the key story locations first, and then build all of the less important buildings around them. If you get very lucky and get three superstars in a row on the Fame or Shame slot machine, all of the Fame or Shame clothing items will be free. 
All of the Vespucci Job Remix adversary modes are inspired by different action movies, namely Baby Driver, Dukes of Hazard, James Bond, Gone in 60 Seconds, Xander Cage, Fast and Furious, and Mad Max. When the expanded and enhanced versions of the game came out, Rockstar added an event that would happen between the times of 7am and 11am. The event is just an NPC sitting down on the floor, with his legs clipping out of bounds. The event itself is called Movie Set, which to be honest just makes me even more confused. Although people have their theories as to why this guy spawns here, no one seems to actually know why he's here, or what it could mean. In the KO Perico heist, there is only one way to scope out the island, and that's by pretending to be a smuggler. In the game files, however, there's some evidence in the form of a couple of voice lines from Pavel that suggests there's going to be a second way to scope it out, and that was by using the submarine itself to get close, and then swimming on to the island. As mentioned by Pavel, you would have had no disguise whilst doing this, meaning that if you were caught once, you would fail. I will be here when you are finished, Captain. Be careful. You have no disguise, so if they catch you, there will be no doubt and no mercy. I personally would have much preferred if this was in the game, as it would have saved us all from the annoyingly long plane rides over there. Welp, that's the end of the video. I once again hope you enjoyed listening to those utterly useless facts about GTA 5. Before I go, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this series. These three videos, and I'm hoping this video too, have all been immensely popular and have really boosted my channel as a whole. Although I do love making these things, I think I'm going to have to make this video the last of the series. As for one, I don't think my PC could even handle a longer video than this. There were points where Sony Vegas would literally take 40 to 50 minutes to open up. And two, I tend to be very picky about what type of info I put in these vids. They need to be useless, but also interesting. I was really running out of info to put in this video as time went on. And if I made a 40 minute, or God forbid, an hour long video, it would just be filled with crap like, at this location, there is a rock. Basically, the quality would be terrible. I hope you guys understand. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you later.